Let me move away from the commercial opportunity to the, uh, to the defense side of the opportunity. And of course, the Indian government has been focused on self-reliance through the Atmanirbhar Bharat program. And that uh, is the attempt to try and get uh, more manufacturing done here in India. Of course, at the DEF Expo, we've seen Boeing articulate its plans uh, for India. But if you can give us an update on where things currently stand as far as the defense aspiration is concerned and future investments here as well. Well, we support uh, Prime Minister Modi's vision for India, made in India, for India and for the world. And at this stage, uh, as I'm speaking to you, there are 154 Boeing commercial aircraft in operation, but uh, we've delivered 22 Apache helicopters uh, to India, uh, 15 Chinook helicopters, 12 P-8 Poseidon aircraft and 11 C-17s. Uh, and also uh, 777s and uh, 737s for the VIP fleet. Those uh, platforms require sustainment and support, and we've invested in su support of those. We also have uh, other platforms which we have offered and are offering to the Indian government, including our Block 3 Super Hornets, and we have autonomous uh, vehicles and aircraft and some weapon systems, uh, which we will also be offering to the Indian government. I mean, you've got the third largest defence force in the world and quite rightly the decisions that are made by India uh, are entirely a matter for India itself, but uh, we're confident in what we've got to offer. The joint venture that we have with uh, the Tata Group uh, at Hyderabad uh, is an example of what I think the, the future is going to be with Boeing co-investing with Indian companies in the development of products for India and, as I say, for the rest of the world. So we have built uh, nearly 200 Apache helicopter fuselages uh, in Hyderabad. In fact, the first one uh, was delivered the w uh, in uh, January to the Indian Army, or has been produced for the Indian Army which is uh, an illustrator of what we're doing. We invested uh, 100 million US in developing uh, the technology necessary there to build vertical fins for 737s. And we're doing nose cones uh, and tail cones for Chinook helicopters. We're doing tail cones for P8s. This is the kind of co-investment that's important for not just us and our business strategy but also for India itself and and that's a win-win and uh, in, in fact I should also say of course that uh, we've spent 200 million US on a 43 acre site at, um, uh, uh, to, to develop the Boeing India uh, Engineering and Technology Centre which is, uh, which is a extraordinary capability that will uh, house uh, some 4,000 Indian engineers. So we're, we're very pleased. Uh, you know, just on the uh, defence side, because you spoke about that joint venture that you have with the Tatas, uh, but at the Defence Expo, Boeing had also spoken about the need to focus much more on localization and uh, in turn further partnerships here in India. Uh, is there anything on the anvil uh, by way of more partnerships uh, more joint ventures here on the defense side in India. And about the export opportunity that you spoke of, one, of course, is uh, catering to domestic demand, but the export opportunity of making in India for the world, what are the targets that you have in mind? Well, we will be and are exploring further opportunities for co-development in India that meet the needs of India and of Boeing. Uh, I can't be too specific about them uh, at the moment for reasons I hope you would appreciate. We currently have about a billion US dollars in exports uh, from India that we have produced here and we anticipate that that is going to grow. It's going to grow firstly because as a company we believe in India and supporting India itself. We also know that that's an important part of the decision-making process the Indian government quite rightly makes when it's making decisions about procurement, what it's going to buy. And we also know that uh, as a consequence of the geopolitical tensions that we have in the world, that uh, nations are increasing their investment in defence, which means that us and companies like us that pr produce and provide defence platforms and services that we will be uh, selling more of them to, to these countries and that means that more will be of what we do make in India is going to be exported uh, to the rest of the world. 
So in that sense, uh, that's a good story for India and a good story for Boeing. Uh, you know, you talked about uh, uh, how Boeing intends to focus much more emphatically on sustainable aviation, and that's what I wanted to pick up on. Uh, what do you expect we can see in terms of fresh developments over the next few years on that front? Uh, given the uh, current uh, global economic context, specifically high inflation, high oil prices, uh, and all of that impacts, of course, the growth of the sector. So, uh, you know, on sustainability linked to the changes uh, and the uh, headwinds that we're seeing as far as the economic climate is concerned, what can we expect? Well, what's extraordinarily important, Shireen, is that all of us, uh, it doesn't matter what, what you do, where you live, what industry you're in, we have to cater for the needs of our generation whilst protecting the capacity of the next and subsequent generations to cater for theirs. We have to be sustainable. Aviation is 2.6% of global greenhouse gas emissions, about 12% of that in the transport sector. So for Boeing, at every, every part of what we do, in our manufacturing plants, our assembly facilities, the management of waste, water, energy, recycling, all of those things to, to reduce our footprint uh, to zero. And our ambition is to get to net zero in aviation by 2050. So what you're seeing at the moment is, and I mentioned earlier, fleet renewals by air, air, airline carriers because if you, the quickest way to reduce your greenhouse gas and, uh, footprint is to purchase new aircraft. So a 737 uh, MAX 8, for example, will reduce your footprint by about 25%, a 787 by about 20%. And then sustainable aviation fuels uh, is certainly in the near, medium and long term for long haul especially is the uh, solution for decarbonising. So we're de investing very heavily in various parts of various um, facilities around the world and partnering with other companies in the development of and production of sustainable aviation fuels or SAF as it is called. In the near term, uh, that is the, the quickest way apart from fleet renewal to get to uh, zero emissions. And we're also working on electrification, which will certainly come in the near term for uh, sh smaller aircraft on shorter flights, turboprops, and of course we're working on hydrogen, mm. but hydrogen is not going to be the solution for commercial aviation in the near or medium term. In fact, The Economist last year described hydrogen for medium and long haul flights for, for, as a hydro fan, as, as a techno fantasy for the next few decades. But we're working on all three of those, uh, those ways of decarbonising aviation as well as the complete life cycle of aircraft themselves. So uh, it, it, is a, it, it informs everything that we do and uh, we have an immense responsibility to decarbonise as quickly as we can. We, our ambition is to be at net zero by 2050. That's the commitment of the entire aviation industry and certainly of Boeing. Uh, uh, Mr Nelson, let me end by asking you about what we can expect as far as 2023 goes for Boeing. 2022 uh, was a turnaround year of sorts, uh, given the difficulties of the past, especially with the 737 MAX. Uh, what should we expect uh, this year, specifically as far as certification is concerned, of some of the newer variants? Well, this, the decision to, certif to the certification of the aircraft, uh, the 737, uh, 7, the 737 and other platforms is entirely a matter for the regulators themselves. Uh, we're working very closely with the regulators in getting the aircraft uh, certified as soon as they safely and practicably and confidently can. Uh, I'd also say on the financial front, uh, uh, for those uh, who, who follow our uh, financial performance, uh, last year we were back to $66.6 .6 billion in revenue and uh, free cash flow of $3.1 billion. Uh, we advised our investor conference in November last year that we expect in 2025-2026 to have uh, about $100 billion in revenue and uh, an operating margin of about 10% and $10 billion in free cash flow. Uh, we, as I said earlier, we had 800 orders uh, last year. 
we are very confident that uh, we're very much on the right track and, uh, and we have significant growth ahead of us. But uh, we still have, uh, we, we know that we still have a lot of hard work to do and we're making sure that we earn the confidence uh, of our customers and, uh, and the travelling public. Ben Nelson, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 uh, and taking us through Boeing's plans for India specifically. Uh, we look forward to seeing you back here uh, soon, but thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, Shireen, and I will be back. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up the CNBC TV 18 special. We'll take a quick break. There's a lot more coming up. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a minute with more. Invest once and enjoy 